scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The word of God is God. It's an expression of himself. Number two, we said the word of God is a revelation of his thoughts and his character. So every time we talk about the word of God, we mean a compendium that reveals to us the thoughts, the intents, and the character of God. You now see that the only way to truly know God, or one of the principal ways, is through the word of God. Because contained therein are the thoughts of God, the character of God, his intents, not just for himself, but for me. I can know what God thinks about me. I can know what God thinks about you when I encounter the word of God. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. So God does not think evil of me. Very powerful. Are we together? He says, though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. So I know that God is not excited when he sees me crying and mourning. There is something in his will and his intent to do something about it. This is very powerful. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. And so I know that God is interested in bringing restoration in my life. If you do not know the thoughts of God from where we get the word logos, translated word, I told you that the Greek word logos that is translated word means the thoughts the intents of a man that seeks to find expression the word of god is a revelation of god's thoughts god's character isaiah 55 from verse 8 and 9 it says my ways are not your ways my thoughts are not your thoughts for as high as the heavens are above the earth that is how far my thoughts are and so we can trust him as we study the word of God, as we expose ourselves to encounter the word, we are learning God. We are learning his ways. We are learning his character. The Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He's trying to paint like an artist using a brush and a canvas, painting the picture of God who is the invisible one. We may not be able to see him, but we can pick pieces of his attributes and his character and it can give us an idea of who we are dealing with. The Bible says God is love. Are we together now? So I know that God loves me. I have loved you with an everlasting love. He says, I have drawn you with my loving kindness. It is not his will that any man should perish. So I know that God would not want anyone to live a mediocre life, a life of failure until he eventually wastes his life on earth.
you will never be able to know the thoughts of God and his character and even his intent until you have an encounter with the word of God. If you are with me, say amen. And then number three, we said yesterday that the word of God is a revelation of God's system of operation, a revelation of his ways, a revelation of his modus operandi, his methodologies. This beautiful, now I know that there are several people who come from um, different communities, most likely around this region, but just for instance, I just from yesterday into today, I have been schooled in many ways, just learning the ethics and learning the modus operandi of living within your environment. Very interesting approach to life and living when you come around here. Is that true? I was taught your speed limits, for instance. I was taught the motivation behind the things that you do. So the next time I come, I may not be a stranger as I am now. Is that true? Because I have learned the modus operandi. You can easily know a stranger because you see him violating the way that things are done. That's how it is in scripture. So I can know you are a Christian indeed to the degree to which you have known the ways of God. If I see that you have a problem with giving, if I see that you have a problem with forgiving, with loving, I know that there is something about the word of God that has not dwelt in you. Because when it dwells in you, it cultures you to understand the ways of God. Are we together? We learn the system of God. It is not unusual. If you see me sow a seed now, if you are truly a Christian who has walked with God, it shouldn't surprise you because this is the way we function in the kingdom. That there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. If you see me diligent, you shouldn't be surprised because the Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? The modus operandi of the kingdom. If you see me interceding and praying, calling on someone's name and saying, Father, visit this family, visit this nation. It shouldn't sound strange to you because in this kingdom, you know that this is the way we operate. That right from where you are, you can lift up the case of another person who is far, miles away from you. And God is also able to attend to that person. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. And by reason of that authority, I can tell one, go and he will go. I will tell one, come and he will come. So you don't have to come to my house. You too, there is a government that backs you. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, who taught you this? I have not found this kind of faith. No, not in Israel. An expression of God, the word of God, a compendium of his thoughts and character, the word of God, a revelation of the modus operandi, the ways of God. Hallelujah. Then we rounded up last by beginning to explore four dimensions of power that are contained in the word of God. I just took one of them and we'll take it from there today. The first is the power to create. That the word of God has the power to create. To create means to make something out of nothing. As far as our definition here is concerned. But then from a spiritual standpoint, to create means the ability and the technology to transport realities from the unseen realm. And to make them manifest here and now. You can take healing from the unseen realm. You can take prosperity from the unseen realm. You can take speed from the unseen realm. You can take breakthroughs from the unseen realm. And you can cause them to be made manifest. The power to create. John 1 verse 3 says, And without him was not anything that was made. Without him, outside of him. So it doesn't matter what state I find myself. Creation is a possibility. This is very powerful. God can make to be in my life what I do not yet have. The word of God can give you the things that you desire by creation. 
So it should not be a surprise, for instance, if you find a woman who tells you, I do not have a womb, and you say not to worry. All you need is the administration of the word of God. It sustains the ability to put something in your body that was not there. Do we not see the word of God creating things that was not there? Who was seeing that this man was born blind? His father or him? And Jesus said, that's not what is important. All this has happened that the glory of God may be revealed. What is that glory? Creation. And right there, the man who did not have a pair of eyes, supernaturally, his eyes were opened creation number two the word of God has the power to save the power to save the power to save we'll touch on maybe three there are five in all but let's see work with time the power to save first peter chapter 1 and verse 23 the word of god can bring salvation it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abideth forever the word of god is able to bring salvation we are born of the word the word is the seed that brought us into this life that we enjoy today. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. And that from a child, he says, Thou hast known the holy scripture, and that this scripture has the ability to make you wise to the end that you experience salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus salvation is a form of deliverance the highest form of deliverance the ability to be translated from one realm to the other the bible says the word of god sustains that much power to translate a man isn't it marvelous my brothers and my sisters that a man can be wallowing in sin and a life of confusion and purposelessness and whilst that person is sitting hearing you talk as the word of god is coming something begins to happen to that man and literally there is a translation two years after that encounter that man is now a pastor someone who was once an arm robber someone who was once a whatever it is Look the book of Acts and see how people who one moment were something else. But when the word of God came, it just changed them. The word of God is able to save to the uttermost. The word of God turned a murderer called Saul to Paul. The word of God turned all kinds of people. The jailer who was a wicked man in Acts chapter 12, I believe. The Bible says how that, no, 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 not Paul and Silas now, not just Peter. The story of Paul and Silas. The jailer was about to kill himself. And he said, no, don't touch yourself, we are saved. And he said, what should I do? And that man, that same man took them to his house. Look at what the word of God can do. Salvation. Someone who was flogging people on account of the gospel. Moments later, is now cleaning their bodies and saying, I'm sorry. I did not even know what, come on, what came on me. Salvation. No matter how hardened the man is, when the word of God comes, it is able to save. Not save from sin alone. It can save from many things. The word of God is able to save. Is able to to bring any and all forms of salvation to the life of an individual. James 1.18 Is God helping us this morning? James chapter 1 please and verse 18 Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. He used the word of God and fertilize the womb that brought us as new creations in Christ. The Bible says we are born of the word of truth. Born again. 
not by seed corruptible but incorruptible by the word of God that lives and abides forever so the word of God contains the power to create the word of God contains the power to save number three the word of God contains the power to impart faith the word of God contains the power to impart faith this is very important Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. The power to impart faith. So then, this mystery we call faith, by which the just lives by, it says the just shall live by faith. And that faith comes. So faith is like a messenger that comes. It can come to you. And the agency that brings it is hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith. What is faith? Let me define for you what faith is. Faith is the conviction you have. The name given to the conviction you have about God and the integrity of his person. And then the corresponding action of obedience that you take to commit God as touching his promises is called faith the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his person not the believing the believing is not faith it is the action you take based on the believing that is called faith the action of obedience to honor the conviction that you have about God and the integrity of his person the Bible calls it faith the word of God is able to impart faith until the word comes there is nothing to believe faith Acts chapter 14 and verse 9 the word of God sustaining the ability to impart faith this was Paul speaking watch this now whilst Paul was speaking there was a man who was lame and the Bible says the same heart everybody say he heard he had the word Paul was speaking and whilst he was hearing faith was building growing in him who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that now on account of what he was hearing he now had faith to be healed faith to be blessed faith to be lifted there was something Paul was saying and the man was listening like you are listening to me now and I'm telling you that God is able to turn a man's life around God is able to lift a man and you are saying this is true I'm showing you scripture after scripture and the Holy Ghost is breathing upon what I'm saying and doubt and fear is being shaken out of your life I know this is true There is no other way to obtain Bible faith. You cannot get faith from a newspaper. You cannot get faith from a magazine. Except if the information there comes from the word of God. The word of God is the official and only platform to impart Bible faith. Are we together? They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. Their faces lightened. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Let me tell you this. You will never be able to do exploits in this kingdom 
until there is faith genuine bible faith there are no guarantees in life by default nobody has kept any guarantee for anybody there is no guarantee that you will succeed there is no guarantee that your helper will be alive at the time you need him this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith it says therefore holding forth the shield of faith where which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts not so faith is powerful there is no arsenal fashion that faith is not able to resist the word of god can impart faith so i open my bible and i'm trusting god to lift me and i begin to read and i'm seeing people who were ordinary but were lifted by the word of god the word of the Lord came to them and lifted them. Some doubted that word and perished like the foolish man in Samaria. If God will open this window, is it true that by this time tomorrow this would happen? He saw it and he did not enter. The Bible gives us a warning that we should not be like them which perish in the wilderness. That today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as they did in the wilderness. Faith can bring you to your Sabbath. There remained a rest for the people of God. Financial Sabbath. Sabbath. Sabbath in your health. The word of God can impart faith. Therein lies our confidence in this kingdom. We know that tomorrow is guaranteed because the word has gone ahead. We know our lives are blessed because the word of God has gone ahead. I'm seeing like fire coming on that lady wearing yellow. I just saw something look like oil and fire coming upon her. And the Lord is saying he's lifting you and your family. That lady there, I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Faith. Listen, listen. This morning, I want you to shake away unbelief. And believe God. Lord, you are able. I may come from a background where no one knows me. But time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Hebrews 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence, the evidence, the proof that the things that you do not see are there. It says, by this mystery, elders obtain good reports. Through faith, verse 3 says, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Then he begins to list all of these people. Ordinary people. God calls an idol worshiper called Abraham in awe of the Chaldeans. Abraham, come. I want to make you a father of many nations. And the man foolishly followed. Who are you following? A voice, an idol worshiper. And if you follow me, I will make you a great nation. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you, curse him that curses you. And if you trust me enough in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Abraham said, let's go. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm blind enough to follow you. There are no guarantees anywhere. 
it is faith that becomes that invisible ladder you keep climbing it looks like you will fall but after 30 years you are still standing because faith is solid apostle god is calling me into ministry and he's told me i will go around the world with the gospel i just need some uncle to give me a guarantee that if it does not work they will help me build my church you are joking no the word of god becomes that anchor The Lord told me he will lift me from my lowly estate and I will fund the gospel across nations. As it is now, I do not even know how it will happen. Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? Faith. I believe God. It takes faith to believe God. Why will I stand and risk my life and risk my reputation and tell you there's somebody who is going to shout here. What if it doesn't happen? How are you sure you are not lying? <laughs> you see, when you walk with God, as your faith begins to grow, it becomes trust. Faith is based on the word of God. Trust is faith that has history back in it that means you have walked with God and even though you still trust his word but now there is an antecedent I believed him yesterday it worked I believed him last week it worked when David stood before Goliath, it was not just faith as we know, it was trust. He says, the God who delivered me, he reached down to his archives and said, he has done it. It has happened. That's why it's important to archive your testimonies. Because days will come, you will need to reach down and say, in 1997, God of heaven, you took me from and you brought me here. 2000, when it looked like I would not survive, this happened. No, this uh, before you finish testifying, the mountain that stands before you has deflated. Many times we forget what he did yesterday. That's why what he wants to do looks big. If you remember how he did what he did yesterday, you will know. They looked unto him, their faces were lightened. Are we blessed? The word of God can impart faith. You know that the faith of God has entered you when you are ready to take actions of obedience. God tells you, for instance, it is time to build a house. And you say, but all I have is 100,000 home and abroad. You tell an architect to work out something and he tells you, say for instance, you need 15, 20, 50 million. And you laugh at yourself. You laugh at what you are writing. You will never build that house. If you think he will just come by. saving money no the signs follow you have to take a step they go after you they don't go before you when you hear the word of God and there is a word for you that gives you an assurance you can go and buy one tipa of sand pour it on that land and leave it there and say Lord I have started I've committed you there are two names you are called Alpha Omega I have made you Alpha you must be Omega finish I have started it already there is no going back suddenly someone calls you and says I hear you want to build I may not have much but send me your account one million and God says start buying the zinc and keep and say zinc Lord we're talking blocks he said trust me the day you stand for that dedication while others are dancing you are crying be magnified oh Lord mine no one was educated around his nuclear family and he kept having dreams and he saw that he was going to become a great person and he said well I come from a background where no one really would have the ability to educate me but I will take responsibility eventually one thing led to the other made his papers wrote jam and he got um, a score that would probably give him admission he kept praying and fasting praying and fasting
eventually when the admission came to his shock it was not the course he wanted but at least they gave him admission it was a miracle the first person to ever have the potential of getting into a high institution of learning yet no money no nothing when he told his loved ones they said look forget about it please don't bring any pressure on the family we're trying to leave and this gentleman he was inspired in church and he got up carried a Ghana must go put whatever clothes he had and said I'm I'm returning back to this house a graduate all I need is transport to leave this house how are you going to survive you are crazy you don't know what <clears throat> just put something for me even if it means to borrow I promise you that I will return with interest I'm going that's fate this gentleman left and I remember he came into the high institution of learning shocked not even knowing where he was going to pass the night no friend no nothing but the word was ahead of him I will never forget the day that gentleman called me and said sir I'm holding in my hands my degree faith always delivers the rest is history go and ask him how he ate go and ask him how he went. do you know eventually he became an esco in a fellowship on the campus there helped others know jesus christ lifted others enjoyed scholarships finished with honor but if he did not take that step maybe god is speaking to someone you've been saying one one day go better it's time to get up and shake that unbelief and say look i take responsibility you are 30 years 35 years you are still in your father's house and let me just see how the permutations work hey get up get up find scripture and get up and say it's time to be responsible i hope you still love me the word of god contains power listen behind the exploits of men and women in this kingdom i've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few fathers of faith in this nation and you cannot tell the level of palpable faith that lives in these people when they talk you need faith to hear them not to believe to hear because what they will tell you you can even be angry as you leave and and that is their normal their default state of speaking you can build your faith as you encounter the word that is why when you don't pay attention to the word your faith cannot grow are we together now yes you must obtain grace I remember many years ago I used to stay in one small room and from that room I kept having visions of the globe visions of nations visions of kings visions of territories and the Lord told me this is where I'm taking you to right from that room I believed him right from that room notebooks after notebooks I kept writing when people are sleeping in the night I'm awake preparing because he told me this is where we are going and today let the Lord be magnified that is all that I can say you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well that will be your song at the other side of your obedience you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well, you have done me well, 
You have done me well Faith that comes by the word while people are laughing at you, while people are concluding about you, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You are there believing his word. Lord, this ministry you have called me into, I believe that I'm a blessing. I may not know and have all it takes now. Listen to me, my dear people, let me speak to you. There may be a few of you here that have the call of God upon your life. Do not let anyone despise your gift. Learn with honor, grow with honor be mentored with honor but know that the only limit to your life is the limit you place through unbelief are we together there is nothing I cannot believe God for today I have seen his hand the word of God sustaining the ability to impart faith are we still here number four the word of God has the power to transform. The word of God has the power to transform. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you like Christ in experience. Transformation. The word of God has the power to transform. To transform means to change states. To transform means to change levels. God's servant Bishop David Oedipo calls it next levels. It's a grace that can move you. Thanks. Be to God who causes us always to triumph. So that the version of you that was there yesterday it's not the same one again that you will meet. Why seekest the living among the dead? Transformation. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Please write it down. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Shela bakaruski atabalada. As newborn babes, it says, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. That means, as a new believer in Christ, naive, ignorant, not knowing anything about the faith life, I can begin to engage God's word. And from a new believer, you come back and meet a matured believer. Look what the word of God did to the disciples. Come, follow me, he says, and I will make you. And they came as naive fishermen, tax collectors, all sorts of people. And through three years of intensive word mentorship, alongside the Holy Spirit, he called them, these are they that turn the world upside down. Transformation. By the power of the word. By the power of the word. Are we together? Transformation. By the power of the word. First Peter chapter 1, when you read from verse 2, down to four it says grace and peace be multiplied are we still together first second peter i meant to say second peter chapter one from verse two second peter chapter one grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge 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 the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord so grace can be multiplied peace can be multiplied next verse it says according as his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness again through knowledge the knowledge of him the word that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The word of God. Able to translate you, transform you, 
from a lower version of yourself to a more superior version. John 15 and verse 3. The word of God is able to clean and purify. It says, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. No matter how you come, the filthiness of the mind, all kinds of wrong ideas, cultural ideas that are wrong, religious ideas that are wrong, all kinds of ideas that come from our African context that impede and limits people. The word of God is able to clean a man to a point where you become transformed, a superior version of yourself. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship or service. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this age. Do not be conformed, but be ye transformed like they teach in primary science that an insect can go through the egg then the lava still remember then pooper then adult man can change states in life intellectually man can change states in life spiritually man can change states in life financially that the level that you were by January or by June, by the time you enter the ember months, you have changed. The world is a ladder. You can climb it and it can elevate you to realms and dimensions that were previously not captured in your experience. May the word of God change us in the name of Jesus Christ. The power to create the power to save the power to impart faith the power to transform can I add one more the word of God has the power to heal and to deliver Psalms 107 from verse 19 Psalms 107 from verse 19 they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saveth them out of their distress next verse he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them not just out of demons alone but out of destruction Deliverance is not just separating you and a spirit alone. It's separating you from a limiting obstacle. You can be delivered from things. The word of God is able to heal. I know this from scripture. I know this from the testimony of my own life. I know this by the privilege of ministry it is true that the word heals I am the Lord that he led thee I am the Lord your healer You sent your word and it healed my disease. Sing it one more time, personalize it now. You are the Lord that he led me. You are the Lord my healer you sent your word you sent your word and it healed my 
try one more time with understanding you are the Lord that he John chapter 11 Jesus tells his disciples Lazarus sleepeth let's go and wake him and the disciples said no 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 he's not been feeling fine if he's sleeping then he's good for his health he said no he's gone when they got there Mary and Martha began to cry where have you been he says, don't worry, I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, I know you've taught us that already. But he says, even now, roll away the stone. When they rolled the stone, the word from this earth realm issued a command, Lazarus. If he did not call a name, every dead person would have come back to life. He had to choose the one because the word of God was going to enter the realm of the spirit and select. I want to do this just for your glory. If he said come forth, rapture would have happened immediately. The word. He said Lazarus. And the word entered the realm of the spirit. Searching dead bodies and found him and said the master is calling you back. If the word of God can bring a dead body back, a dead finance, dead relationships all you need to do is to name it it's a risk to just say I want change, no Lazarus come forth he said and he that was dead he came out in grave clothes I want you to believe what I'm saying the word of God truly has power come forth For someone you are saying it's too late apostle you don't know what has happened in my life ah the miracle of the raising of the dead was to show you that things can be restored they are taken for a prey and none saith not thinketh saith restore Some of you, as I'm talking, you are just remembering things that have left your life. I lost money. I lost people. Now, where will my help come from? The word of God has power to heal. Not just heal your body. It can heal your mind. A broken spirit can dry up the bones. This is the reason why a sick body, watch this, someone can come on a crutch or on a wheelchair or be blind and deaf and while the service is happening, the person is still sitting there. In fact, even when the preacher is preaching, the man is still there, faith is being lifted. And then the word of God comes, stand. And someone who for 25 years, 15 years, Acts chapter 3, let me show you what the word of God is able to do. Acts chapter 3, please give us from verse 1. I just sense that the power of God is strong here. We're going to pray shortly. The Bible says, Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour is the beautiful that they had timing the discipline to go and pray 
you don't pray anyhow and want to grow methodically you must discipline yourself there's something called the time the hour of prayer verse 2 and a certain man lame you see what being reduced to nothing does it erodes your name there was a naming ceremony for this man but he had been so reduced nobody knows or cares about his name don't let your condition be higher than your name this man's name started going down and all that is left is his condition a certain man means it's not a parable there really was a man for certain his name we do not know we just know his condition lame from his mother's womb so it was not a mistake of doctors like Mephibosheth from his mother's womb he was lame the Bible says whom they carried daily at the gate of the temple which is being called beautiful the Bible says he came to ask for arms of them that entered into the temple ah, God is speaking now God is speaking now God is speaking now verse 3 it says who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple he asked them for arms now a miracle is about to happen follow carefully verse 4 Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John he said look on us do you know what it means to look verse 5 gives you an explanation of what it means to look every time the Bible says look or look steadfastly that's what it means it means give heed expecting to receive that's what it means to look when God says look on us it means pay attention something is about to leave God to you to look does not just mean see you are already looking the Bible says the man was already looking on them it's a mystery it's a coded communication look on us he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them verse 6 and Peter said silver and gold have I none <laughs> but such as I have such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up what did he have that word rise up and walk do you know when he said rise up and walk the man did not rise up read your Bible he was there looking at them and said what are you saying and Peter said I need to help you next verse the Bible says and Peter took him by the right hand and said the word has already come you are stopping the word from walking he lifted him up and the Bible says he leaping his bones receive strength the same way you are seated here now for many of you you are trying to rise you may not be lame physically but there are things keeping you down Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2 we're about to pray my God my spirit is fired up I just sense there is a strong anointing in this place Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 there is such strong anointing yes things are shifting in the spirit the power of God's word you sang it already running out like running physically Please, whether you're in out like running physically, please, whether you're an usher or not, I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves. Everything that represents delay, I bring a word in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab. I stretched my hands. May the grace for speed come on your life. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. No more delay. Help them, please. Help them. No more delay. In the name of Jesus, every power sitting on your destiny, stopping you from experiencing speed. In the name of Jesus, I take authority by the word of the Lord. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Papa. Toto 
Be delivered now. Bring them out. Bring them out. Go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, it's time to rise higher in the spirit. Bring them out. Help them. Please help them. Pray. This is a word conference. Your life is about to change. Speed. Is someone praying? Are there people of prayer in this place? the name of the Lord. Amen. Who is Victoria? I'm hearing the name Victoria. 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 The Victoria I'm talking about is holding a child. Is there any Victoria here? You are holding a baby. This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Is there someone like that? Come. Let it rain. My dear, this is your child? Is your husband here? No, sir. Where are you coming from? I stayed across, opposite. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You see, from next month and for the next three months, what will happen in your family will amaze you. Amen. You will never forget this conference. Amen. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Father, I stretch my hands over Victoria. You have brought her by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I release you. And your husband step into a new level of supernatural blessing. Take that grace. You will never, never be the same. I decree and I declare that everything that is not the planting of the Lord over your family here at this word conference in the name of Jesus be delivered from it right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone that's all right, please you can give them the child. The Lord is showing me someone here. The power of God is going to come upon you. There are patterns of death over your family. And the Lord says he wants to bring it to an end. We will not take time. We will just pray and then we are done for this morning session. We will hopefully have the time to minister and pray for the sick. Please don't be embarrassed. I am seeing a woman here. You have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You are wearing blue. Look at this.
Look at this. Listen. Please look up. Let me teach you something. I know that there's been a lot of abuses, immaturity, imbalances in the administration of the prophetic. This has come because of insufficient or inadequate mentorship alongside lack of scriptural balance. Are we together now? When the gifts of the Spirit are administered out of the reference of scripture, they will lead to a plethora of imbalances. However, there is the accurate system of administering the gift of the Spirit such that believers are edified and then Jesus is glorified. Look the people who have come before the Lord. You see, when miracles happen like this, it is more than just a show that a man is... You don't have to kneel, my people. It, it is more than a show that a man is anointed. No. No. There is a bigger agenda to that. When you see so many women coming to stand unashamed, trusting God for a miracle, God, you see, there are messages behind every prophetic word and every miraculous manifestation. God is speaking about fruitfulness. It may not just be biological fruitfulness alone. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. We'll sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. I will start by ministering to the officer woman. I have profound respect for people in the military and people in the force. They labor day and night protecting our regions, protecting our nations. And anywhere I see them, not favoritism, but I show them the honor that befits their sacrifice. Madam, thank you for coming. Lay your hands on your stomach. I want to pray for you. I'll pray for everyone, but I want to pray for you. Do you believe in miracles? In the name of Jesus, look at me, madam. I stretch my hands towards you. I don't care what the medical situation is. In the name of Jesus who sent me to this island, and by the power of the resurrected Christ, I decree and declare unto you, according to the time of life, go and return with your children in the name of Jesus Christ according to the time of life go and return with your children in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm going to pray for all of you I really really can sympathize with you and it is not an easy thing to get up and come standing for yourself believing God for this all of the troubles that many of you may have to have gone through this is why he sent us we come as instruments revealing his love revealing his power i want to pray for you right now truly there is power to heal truly i want you to know that if you believe this you will be surprised Forget about whatever medical report you see. Just focus on Jesus. They looked unto him, the Bible says, and they were not ashamed. Please place your hand. Don't cry. Place your hand on your stomach. I want to pray for you. Please help them because the power of God will come on some of them. I've got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and lean. It is recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. Something is happening to you as.
I'm, as I'm singing this song, my God, look and leave my brother, leave. Look to Jesus. A miracle is happening in your womb. No power in existence can stop you. Hallelujah. Now I command every spirit behind this. You know my voice, I speak as one sent. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, help them. I command those devils out of their bodies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare, help that man. I'm sure he's standing in for his wife or some person. In the name that is above all names, may your womb be open now. May your womb be open now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Let me tell you this. There is a vision that I saw this morning. I will tell you in the evening. But there is something to settle on your land here. I'm going to be praying a prayer this night in this place. The Bible says, Wherefore God had so highly exalted him that everything that is not, it, that does not name the name of Christ, that territorially holds people down, except Jesus is not Lord, he must give way to them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray for you, my dear sisters, in the name of Jesus, in the presence of all the men of God, veterans of the gospel within this region, we agree by faith as a family of faith and we declare in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, go and return with your miracles. Go and return with your miracles. God who located you and brought you out by his spirit it does not matter whether the challenge comes from you your husbands or both in the name of Jesus we correct every anomaly in the name of Jesus Christ please return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing Return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone who will we'll be rounding up now. The Lord is showing me someone. You are here, but I'm seeing that you came from Lagos. There's something that has to do with Lagos. I don't know whether you came for this program or you had something that brought you from Lagos. The Lord wants me to pray for that person. I'm seeing a connection with Lagos. Is there someone like that? Very quickly, and then I'll pray with you. If there's someone like that, please, very quickly. I'm not saying you live in Lagos. That's not what I'm saying. You're not domiciled here. I don't know why the Lord is asking that I pray for you. I want to pray for you. There's someone you have the call of God. The power of God is coming on you now. I thought we'll do the impartation in the evening, but I'm saying there is God has been training you in the secret very there, there are dimensions of the prophetic and dimensions of the healing grace God wants to to in a greater measure bring these graces these twin graces they don't have to rush out just hold them please In the name of Jesus. You don't have to bring them out. My dear. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Upon such ones. Male 
female you have been in the cave of Adullam being walked upon by the Spirit of God for some of you no one knows you you are still going through the dealings of the Spirit in the name of Jesus the grace Kalapos you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed Let me pray for you now. The power of God will come on one of you in front here. The moment that happens, I'll now pray for the rest. Just hold it. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, connected to Lagos, I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that everything that represents failure, everything that represents retrogression, in the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I declare let it come to an end now for you and for all connected to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray in Jesus name please go back maybe just one who is Sam the Lord would not let me rest I'm hearing a name Sam they call you Sam Sam like S-A-M is there anyone those following online you can connect by faith it's not only those in the local um, environment here. God can be speaking. Please make sure your name is Sam. Who is that? What's your name? Sam. You are Sam? What do you do, sir? A coach. I do sports. I want to pray for you. Touch your, your left leg. <clears throat> if I, I want to pray for you so that something will not happen to your bone here. Amen. That it will affect you in sports. You see what I'm saying? I hope, I'm not a prophet of doom. Huh? You hear what I'm saying? But I don't pray for you. I'm seeing something that is breaking your bone. And this thing is affecting you almost like ruining what you are doing. But can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Number one, I pray that you will help this man. The Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. He keepeth his bones and none is broken. I declare may the Lord keep and preserve you. And then I pray for your career and that which you do, the grace to excel. Let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus. And for all of you, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord called you out by himself. I decree and declare that which you do. I bless your hands. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus. Now, I'd like you to open your mouth in one minute. What one thing are you trusting? That between now and the end of this conference must be a testimony in your life I release my faith with you please open your mouth and pray by faith pray by faith pray by faith unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come is someone talking to the Lord pray by faith maybe concerning your job this is a word encounter maybe concerning your spiritual life greater levels of fire grace anointing Maybe for your family, your children, maybe for your loved ones, maybe for your region. Go ahead and pray. Are you praying? Don't be tired of prayer. It's important to pray. Don't say I prayed about it again and again and nothing happened. Pray. Pray. 
Manta Paracata Barete Cate Predeca de Veladarus Shalabaracata Prende Cate Vere de Balada Baladabos Just help those under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out. Just help them. We are praying. This is part of the meeting. Please pray. You came this morning. Help those under the anointing. Just help them. You don't have to bring them out. I'm releasing my faith with you. The Lord is answering prayers. Just hold them. Hold them so hold them and just keep them down somewhere. Shabaka parada gada balada bakasia. Shkem preteke paratos kateleke te parada balada balaba. If you have nothing to pray, pray in the spirit. Let's take a few minutes to build up our spirit man. Shente pakata parakatos katebeleke te frada gada. Shabaros kateperentes katabalakata. Le shalas katapranta katafrades katebeleke ta. But ye, oh, beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray. Fresh anointing, oh God, upon my ministry. Fresh anointing, oh God, upon my life. Are you praying? Fresh anointing. A resurrection over my prayer life. A resurrection. Help those under the anointing. Help those under the anointing, please. Just hold them so they don't fall. Please hold them. Hold them and just. Challenge every force. Challenge every power that contends with the word of the Lord over your mouth. Challenge every force. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted ancient doors. Over this island, over this region. It's time for God's people to experience the prevailing power of the word the prevailing power of the grace of God. Pray over your career. Pray over your profession. Pray over your family. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your spiritual life. Pray over your destiny. Don't be silent. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Kaparakata prenta kate boto sokotopa. Eprekatos katelekate. Rakata prenta kate proskata kata prata kate. Embreketos shelekate prana kata barus. Spiritual slumber. Spiritual laziness. Lukewarmness. In the name of Jesus, I challenge you on this Lord's day. Shapakata barakatusia. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Pray for a renewed appetite for the word of God. A renewed appetite for spiritual things. Now pray for your loved ones. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, it must be me and my house. It must be me and my house. Parents intercede for your children. Young people for your parents, for your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with them. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Pray so, speak so, declare so. Let the blessed of the Lord pray so, speak so, declare so.
rebuke the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Don't be tired. Lord, I found my prayer altar afresh. I found my prayer altar afresh. I found my prayer altar afresh. Let this be a conference that brings renewal. Let this be a conference that brings empowerment. Let this be a conference that brings refreshing. In the name of Jesus. Let this be a conference that brings empowerment. For in Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Now, let me make a request if if it is fine with the organizers of the conference I'd like you tonight as you are coming come with any point of contact whatever it is that God can use as a point of contact or you can come with a prayer request write something you are tired of that must live your life call your loved ones who may not be able to make it by the grace of God we are going to receive this prayer request this night and let the God that answers by fire arise like the mighty one that he is we'll be praying for the sick tonight and there will be impartations of graces many of you have had dreams visions where god has told you it's time to carry certain graces i'd like you to come with your heart hungry ready to receive for your life for your ministry that he will set you on fire and he will honor you in the name of jesus christ can I pray for you? And with our hands lifted high, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoice. With our hands lifted up to the sky, and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love in a key. Oh, oh, we just tell them we love in a key. In the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the servants of God over this land and this territory. The same way it is raining outside, prophetically any drought in your life in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God we bring that drought to an end now spiritual drought financial drought in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now number two I declare over your life every manifestation of stagnation long-standing stagnation that the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing else is growing I pray in the name that is above all names let stagnation come to an end now whoever has been anointed by God to hold your hands and to lift you in this season in the name that is above all names like Pharaoh sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I command their ministry in your life now. I separate you from any wrong association that is interrupting your spiritual life. Be separated in the name of Jesus. I pray for all who are connected to you here on ground, following online, and all across this nation and the nations of the world the same power that is touching you here by the ministry of angels let it reach them wherever they are and finally I pray every lukewarmness in your spirit man 
some of you your prayer life this was not how you started your word life your passion for the things of god but now you found out that there's there's been a gradual deterioration fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar fresh zeal for the things of god fresh commitment for the house of god in the name of jesus i will not fail to make an altar call yet even though we made one yesterday night i still believe even if it is for the sake of one person who is saying apostle do not end this morning session without giving me an opportunity to run to jesus or you are here you are saying i could not follow yesterday i couldn't make it but i know that i need jesus i remember giving my heart to jesus but my life is not the way it is wherever you are i will count one to four you were not here yesterday please win that war don't wait for someone to be the first come and stand come and stand come and stand Come and stand. God bless you. Jesus, keep coming. There's something special, supernatural about your name. Jesus. If you're joining them, come quickly. Come quickly. standing i salute every one of you for coming the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away jesus is more than the founder of a religion god bless you darling blessings to you i want you to lift your right hand if you can high to the heavens and i want you to say this after me you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me lord jesus i love you and I believe in you that you are the son of God this morning I declare that I am unable to help myself and so I come to you I receive forgiveness of sins and I receive eternal life into my spirit be my Lord be my savior and be my king i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life from today i go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus please keep the hands lifted father we thank you hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.